Welcome. This video was recorded live on World Sake Day, October 1st, 2020. It is a replay of one of the many sake presentations and panels that were live streamed at Sake Day USA, an online sake festival and fundraiser benefiting the American Sake Association, a 501c3 nonprofit organization. The purpose of our nonprofit is to develop approachable and easy to understand sake education materials as well as to provide affordable access to sake tastings and interactive events. If this presentation was of value to you, please consider a tax-deductible donation to the American Sake Association. To donate, please scan the QR code on the screen or visit our website at americansakeassociation.org. Thank you. Enjoy the video hey, and come by. Hey, Welcome. Happy sake, sake happy sake day. Happy World Sake Day. Where's your glass? <laughs> right here. Yes. <laughs> I need four more. Yes, yes. Yeah, open. Next one. <laughs> yes. So, yes. Good to see you guys. Wow. Thank you, yeah, Welcome. Yeah, so many people here, huh? <laughs> well, it's exciting. So it's great. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I, I'm wearing uh, the, the Kapogi apron, you know, Okami san style in, in my house. <laughs> 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 yeah. So, yes, definitely, I want to talk something about sake today, right? <laughs> but, yeah, especially, I want to talk about something crazy, uh, the age sake, koshu. Uh, so I think some people might not know about me, so I'm going to introduce myself briefly. Um, my name is Chizuko, Chizuko Nika Helton. I'm based in New York. Uh, I'm running sake PR company called Sake Discoveries. Um, uh, we do uh, the, uh, uh, the rep for many sake producers in Japan, Kuramoto's, and also uh, they're doing staff training, sake training for their restaurants, and you know, they're holding coordinating events, making lists, sake programs, something like that. And also, you know, the, since the pandemic happened, you know, we do lots of webinars too. And the, uh, I think my assistant, Jessica Jolie is here, right? <laughs> she Hi. Is, yeah, she is actually, you know, the, she's in charge for the uh, most of the webinars. So she's doing lots of things. So, so Jessica, so we talk about the culture today. So what kind of culture you like? So um, for today's lineup for myself, I actually pulled out a fun little selection. I pulled out the all Koji selection and I have here our 2019. So this is from last year. And then I pulled out this super, super fancy one, All Koji 2006. So I think what's amazing is you can clearly see the color difference. But I, I think um, you might have a one that's a little bit older than me. Um, but I, just before we go into that, I do wanna just showcase this last one because I think this one is really, really fun. This is from Daruma Masamune, and it's called Mirai for the Future. And it's from the year 2000. And you can see the color is like this coffee dark brown. So these are the three that I wanted to show and share with you guys all. Um, sadly, I have another seminar at five o'clock. So I just wanted to say kampai to all of you guys on um, uh, National Sake Day, so I actually poured myself a glass of the All Koji, um, which has beautiful notes of oak, honey, and caramel. Um, hopefully, you guys can one day age your own All Koji. So have a little cheers with everybody. Come by, bye, and thank you for having bye. me. Uh, I'm excited to hear what Chizuko San has, but I have to um, zoom off. So bye, guys. Thank you. Bye, come back bye. So. Now my turn. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> so some people are really freaked out. Oh, this sake is so old. You know what? It's I can't I can't drink this anymore. Don't worry. You know the, you you cannot give up. You know on it, any. Don't waste any of your sake. So I want to talk about uh, the Asia Koshu sake presentation. Okay. Oh, Tim, it's, it's something. <laughs> okay. Yep. So any sake matured longer for the longer periods uh, is categorized as age sake or koshu, 
So, koshu literally means old sake. The ko means old, and shu means sake. So, some people said, oh, koshu might be from Yamanashi. It's koshu. That's koshu wine. So, it's different. The koshu wine is area. So, it's different. Just, you know, Romanji or, you know, this alphabet, same, but it's completely different. So, anyway, so koshu is, um, yeah, it's actually no legal, the, the rule for the minimum maturation length. Um, the brewers learn to use this uh, term only for the sake that uh, has been uh, the matured for two years or more, usually. Next. Okay, next. Mm -hmm. So sake is easily damaged if it's exposed to heat of store, uh, the, uh, the, or storing light. These can heat the sake uh, causing it to become old and stale before its time. Any type of light could harm the sake, yes. So, you know, that when you uh, the buy sake, you have sake in the house, you know, don't place any, you know, the bright place. You know, if you have the space in the refrigerator, that'd be fantastic. But if you don't have it, somewhere, a little kind of dark, you know, the, the storage or, you know, shelf or a little, you know, the definitely not, right by the window side or the right light side, okay? okay. So, uh, especially it's very delicate sake, it's fragrant, delicate daikinjo style sake or namazake, unpasteurized, fresh seasonal sake. Those are type of sake, it's very, very sensitive, delicate. So especially uh, the namazake uh, that should be refrigerated at the below a uh, Celsius or a, uh, 48 and 45. Uh, most namazake should be consumed within six months. However, there are some exceptions. Uh, so namazake is really delicate. It's really bright. It's so fresh aroma and texture. It's Usually, it's like a fresh apple or peach or something really fresh, fruity notes, ginjo aromas. But if you store something, you know, bright area, play, you know, place something wrong or store it too long or after it's open, it has a little bit kind of unpleasant aroma. It uh, smells like kind of hazelnuts or kind of pungent like a little funky aromas, malt or something like that. <clears throat> so, you know, people might think, oh, this sake, you know, goes bad. So I don't want to drink it anymore. But you know what? I don't want to give up on that. <laughs> and I don't want you to give up on that either. And also, that's that type of sake, it's, it's called a hine. Hine means uh, old, aging. So it's fall. But if you take positively, it's called the juku, aging, the good hine. So some people don't like, more, the majority of people don't like, don't enjoy the funky pungent aromas. But however, some people, a little geeky community type of, you know, people love kind of hine or juku or those type of kind of aging sake style. So I'm not belonging the kind of geeky community, but maybe I'm belonging, mentally belonging the kind of community. So some easy solution I can give you. So if, you, uh, if your sake has a little unpleasant aroma, you know, you can add a little bit water and you can heat it. And it's called uh, the kasui kang. Kasui means added, added water, and kan means warm, yes, uh, the warming, sake, sake warming. So it's, my, I, by the way, I'm a big fan of kan sake or hot sake. So this technique I usually uh, use for even not hine, uh, bad, unpleasant type of sake. It's, I, use, I use this technique for the many type of sake, even just regular very rich uh, Yamaha style sake or Kimoto style sake or something really uh, old aged sake. So just a teaspoonful of water and add it. That's one and a half, like 
So when I use uh, the, I use this type of uh, the, uh, you know, it's called the chirori, so the one, uh, the one uh, is warm sake, heat up sake. So sake is pour, heat you here, and maybe 50, 55 uh, the Celsius degrees, and then uh, just a little bit, a uh, teaspoonful of water added. And then the, the temperature goes down a little bit, and it tastes more like kind of sharper and crispier, but at the same time, it's a little lighter. So this technique is really, really easy to use for the many type of sake. If you feel, oh, this sake is too bold or too funky aromas or something like that. So next, lemon. So this one is very uh, refreshing style, you know, the solution. I love this way. So just simply a little bit sliced lemon and even hot sake and make hot sake as usual, and just put in the fresh lemon after here that uh, yeah, the temperature goes like maybe 55, 50. It's not from beginning. If you put it from the, uh, the low temperature, you know, the sake tastes too much tar from the, the sourness, the bitterness comes out. So just a little bit slightly, uh, the small piece of one slice of uh, the lemon. That is really good. And not even not kanzake, you can enjoy this uh, the technique for the on the rocks, yeah. or you know just a chilled sake, just a little bit small piece of even just squeeze you know yeah, the yeah, couple drops like into the glass. That's it's the, great. I mean, I, you, you know, it's like hey, Jisco, we have a question in the chat. Okay. okay. And can any sake be aged, or do you only want to age certain styles uh, of sake? Any sake you can age, but you know that's totally your I'll preference. So, uh, it's my husband's voice. Is, <laughs> it's a little, yeah. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> he's working next to me. I'm so sorry. So yes, any sake is fine, but you know it's uh, a little bit fragrant, daiginjo sake and namazake style, or those type of sake. I highly recommend to you know the drink as soon as you can. But this solution is a little bit of technique. If it's kind of emergency, <laughs> you know, if you have kind of leftover or some little, you know, those type of leftover kind of, you know, it's unpleasant aroma comes out. Yeah, so yeah. Th these are ways to kind of rescue your sake. Exactly, it's a rescue, a bit, totally rescue. Yeah, yeah it's a, way. a little over the hill, exactly. right? If it's exactly. over the hill. Exactly, over the hill, yes. Either. All right, yeah. you ready for the next slide? Yes, please. Okay. So next solution, yeah. this is crazy yeah. probably, but yeah. I love whiskey too. Thing? So yeah. just a little yeah. bit of whiskey add, add to the sake. But this technique, I don't recommend for the namazake or daiginjo sai sake. This technique is for more yeah. gold, you know, not fruity well, type of sake. I mean, so look, especially Kimoto or Yamaha or, like or you can enjoy the Honjozo uh, or Mitsushu so or Jumai too, but definitely not fruity yeah. aroma type of sake. So next, uh, this is a kind of uh, the example. So Daishi Kimoto. Daishi Kimoto, Daishi is really famous for the Kimoto sake. So this is kind of bowl, but mild, really. It's kind of got the clean finish, dry sake. This sake with just tiny bit of maker's mark makes more milder and also a little bit more like cream milk caramel flavor like and mm -hmm. actually surprisingly on the rocks and hot extremely hot both temperature is awesome and this sake is easy to pair with uh actually egg dish it's egg is kind of difficult to pair with wine i think but for sake eggy dish is a little great with sake, especially Kimoto or Yamaha or something, bold style sake. So this is my favorite combination, yeah, Mega Smart and Kimoto. So it's called Whisk Kimoto, I call it. And next technique. This is Umeshu with Yamazaki. So Yamazaki is really, I don't know, everybody knows Yamazaki. 
This is beautiful, beautiful, you know, the Japanese whiskey. I love, of course, you know, that you can enjoy this itself and maybe should be you know, enjoy just by itself. But if you have just a little bit, you know, add to the umeshu, any umeshu is fine. It's unbelievably delicious. And, you know, this, this style is easy to recommend whiskey fans too. So it's kind of easy sake cocktail. And then I asked my friend Chika, the pastry chef, and ch chocolate, and she created a special chocolate in the, on the plate. Well, it's actually ibrigako, smoked daikon radish, covered dark chocolate. So the smokiness, saltiness, a little sweetness, with a little whiskey, you know, the smokiness, dryness, and umeshu is a little, you know, the sweetness combined. That'd it's so complex, I mean, but so I mean, unbelievable. Great. That's had, great. I mean, that video that got, Sounds awesome. People are asking in the chat, how much okay. does a little mean? Yeah. Okay. When you say okay. add a little whiskey or yes. add a little. Okay. Well, it totally, it's up to your preference. But my suggestion is uh, the one that, okay, the glass bowl, something I'll like say, that, I'll a little bit say, more, okay. and just teaspoonful or even just a couple drops whiskey makes huge difference. So it's totally up to you, up to you. But even, you know, if the Yamazaki is really pricey and actually it's really, really, you know, the makes big difference. So I suggest, you know, if you want to try just even maybe one, two drops first, then you can adjust to your preference. This one is actually, it's on the rocks, it's great, uh, on the rocks, and it's extremely hot, it's great too. And the next idea is tea. So this one is actually, I created uh, the, a few years ago, I think more than that, I don't know. But anyway, so this is, um, I created the sake, sake tea cocktail for Kajitsu, uh, the restaurant in New York, Midtown. So, they have Ippodo, it's a really famous fancy tea shops, you know, tea shop in the, in the restaurant. And Ippodo's very popular tea is small, very smoky, uh, smoky yeah, tea. Yeah, yeah. So I really, really enjoy the smok smokiness. So I wanted to blend with something sake. So I picked uh, sake, Yamaha for this. Yeah, so nice. this is, uh, Actually, I picked the Yamaha, the Tenguma Yamaha. That this Tenguma Yamaha is easily over two yeah, years age in general, the the before they ship to the market. So it's more kind of aging aroma and already really flavorful, the richness, creaminess, and also the uh, Yamaha's kind of sourness, acidity, high acidity. And added a tea, hot tea. That ratio I recommend is 60% of tea and 40% of sake. But the, the, the key is, I highly, highly recommend to add something salty stuff. It's, I added umeboshi. It's really sour and salty, you know, umeboshi. You can add the, the salted kombu seaweed too, dried kombu seaweed or something like that. But something a little, you know, the salty thing, it's, it's instead of kind of olive or something for the cocktail, you know, it's a little kind of bite it, just tiny bit, and then sip the tea sake cocktail. It's ice and hot bought gray. Sounds like an amazing combination. <laughs> yeah. And have you ever heard of the, uh, have you ever tried the, the Hidesake before? <laughs> wow, Susan, no? I've wow. tried it. You know yeah. I've tried it, but do I, I like it? I, That's another uh, question if I exactly, like it. Exactly, exactly. I saw you are not happy with it. <laughs> I saw it. This yes, is fascinating, though. <laughs> yes. So I think I would like this. Yeah? So mm -hmm. I think, you know, Hidesake might be the, you know, at the very first hot sake cocktail in Japan. I think, right? So hide sake is usually used the, the puffer fish, right. you know, so the like right like fugu. Like so pork it's pork. dried fugu, a uh, puffer fish tail part, and the dried tail part, and the, you know, a little kind of broad yeah. uh, the uh, grill, and or broil, 
and then put it in a very extremely hot socket and then light it and then cover a little bit. <laughs> it's kind of crazy cocktail, but it's, you know, if your sake is, I don't, I don't I'm not saying like the namazake or daiginjo, but something, you know, it's maybe honjozo or futsuchu is fine. That the cheap one is totally fine. But, you know, if you have kind of old sake in your house and then, you know, do you, have no idea what to do, you know, this is kind of the fun way. But of course, you know, some people, especially Asian people love fishy aroma and enjoy, right? But I know not so much, you know, <laughs> enjoyable for the other type of people like Tim. <laughs> so I created the next solution, the truffle instead of, <laughs> <laughs> instead of the charred fish. <laughs> so that's more kind of a little fancier, but definitely it's easy to recommend for the vegan people, <laughs> vegan friendly, uh, the truffle sake. So I created the truffle kan, it's called truffle kan. It's definitely it's for hot sake. So this one is also for the uh, definitely honjozo or futsushu or something, a little, you know, the cheap one is totally fine. And the, uh, don't use the something kind of ginjo or fruity one. I highly recommend something a little simple, you know, the one. Yeah. Right. Wow. That was so interesting. Mm -hmm. So many things you can do with sake that's over the hill, right? Exactly. If it's aged a little bit too much, there's some, yeah. some things you can do to rescue it. Exactly. And you have, you have one you want to open? Yes. Now I'm going to open one of my crazy collection. This one, Sandok from. I'm going to spotlight uh, you so everyone can. Yes. Yeah, oh, actually. Stop sharing. Yeah. This one. There you are. Yes. This one, can you see? This one is brewed in 16, I don't know, 1968. Oh my goodness. That's see? the year I was born. <laughs> yeah, before even I, I was yeah, I wasn't born yet. So this one is almost <laughs> like a soy sauce. I feel like I'm drinking soy sauce. So kampai. Kampai. Oh my. Wow. It's so complex. It looks really thick too. It looks like you just chew it. Wow, but surprisingly it left on it. It's it's definitely like, wow. It's like a bit of chocolate. It's coffee. It's a little high acidity. It's a long finish. But surprisingly, so much milder, so gentle. This one is, you know, this, this 36. It, it means alcohol content is 36%. It's really, really high. But I don't taste much, too much high alcohol content. It's really I'll be careful though. <laughs> Yeah. I'm pro, maybe. <laughs> That's right, yeah. you're, you're pro. <laughs> yeah. Hope so. You're professional drinker. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But anyway, so I love kosher, age sake. I love to age, you know, the, my age with my old sake collection. And yes. also, I don't want you to waste any sake. Right. So now yeah. we know yes. what we can do. Thank you so much, Shiz. Yes. It was Thank great you so you much, here. Chizuko. We yes. really appreciate Arigato. it. Matane. Okay. Bye. 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 All right. Thanks, Cheese. Wow. Did you know you could do all that with aged sake? No, I had no idea. I, I just thought that aged sake was its own thing. That, which it is, yes, but I didn't realize that if you had a sake that maybe you forgot about in the fridge, that you're like, oh, and it was already open, I didn't realize that you could actually add things to it to um, make it better. That's awesome. I'm going to try this yeah. too. Awesome. Like on purpose, like the whiskey moto, that sounds great. Yeah, so we have, uh, we have Sake Ninja back with us. Yay! Hey, Sake Ninja. Nice to see y'all. I'm back. I uh, mm -hmm. I was partaking in some some old koshu uh, made with koji, and I mixed a little whiskey with that bad boy, playing along. 
And then this is a, a shoe samba from 2000. I don't know if you can see the, the date there, but ah, it was bottled in 2004. Uh, so some, some old, I was drinking along with Tisco and learning and I have lots of fun to, to play around with that. Uh, super exciting. 